This is the Horse Radio Network. Hey, you're listening to Adulting with Horses, the best place to be if you can't be at the barn. We are your co-hosts and equine authors, Heather Wallace and Natalie keller Reinert. As crazy horse girls, we don't take ourselves too seriously in the saddle or out. We celebrate the things that make us different. Join us as we talk about horses and pop culture and get a little weird in a fun way. Thank you for being a little weird with us. Hi, Natalie. Sure. Hello. Natalie. Your lights are burned out. <laughs> yeah, my lights I just want everyone to know. <laughs> right off the bat, burned out. It's real. <laughs> it's a reflection of my inner soul, just so we're clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, I you know I drove back from Kentucky yesterday. Yeah, which is how a, is that? The drive or Kentucky? Because you know, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, Kentucky was amazing. Because yeah, you volunteered at the Retired Racehorse Project, correct? I did at the Thoroughbred Makeover. Um, so I retired. I retired. <laughs> Goodbye. I have retired. <laughs> You're done. I volunteered at that for two days, and it was pretty epic. Um, you want to talk about good vibes at a horse show. Okay. It was like, everybody, we are all in this together because it's, you know, it's baby horses doing right. very grown up things, right? Because I think most of those horses have raced within the past year. And right. now they it's have like, to be eligible. Yeah. Yeah. To race within a year. Yeah. The eligibility is a little murky to me, but it's, it's generally something like that. And so, um, and so you're in these the Kentucky horse park surrounding. So everything looks like an A rated show. And then a horse does something really squirrely. And you're like, Oh, right. Babies. babies. <laughs> they have no idea what's going on. So there's, there's definitely the spirit between the people running the show, as well as the riders themselves, where everybody's just in it together to, to, to get everybody through and have like an educational experience. It's really cool. It was really cool. That's and then Kentucky's so just nice. beautiful. Yeah, well, it was. I had heard things before, like, you know, they call it the happiest horse show on earth and stuff. And I didn't really understand why. And then I saw it in action. It was incredible. Mm. I want to go. It's always on a tough weekend for me. But and I did get an, you know, I did get an invite to go. And I saw all like the happy little authors running around. And I definitely mm -hmm. had FOMO watching you and your pretty sunrise pictures. Yeah, like, you know, I love sunrise. I was just gonna say, like, can we talk about the fact that you were up before dawn? Like, what I hate that. you must have loved oh this. My God. So I'm, you know, getting kind of obsessed with working horse shows. It's kind of my new favorite thing. Um, but the morning, man, starting at seven, that sucks. I hate it. Especially, well, at least it was a little warmer down in Kentucky than like, say, up here at seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it was chilly the first morning I was there, but I had a jacket. It was fine. And then the second morning, oh, and it got like hot in the afternoon. And then mm. the second morning, I was working in the covered ring. And I don't know if you've ever been in the covered ring. For an extended period of time. It's cold in there. It stays. It's like working in a basement. <laughs> like it holds the, and it's like almost a little dank. Like it holds yep. a little bit of that brisk cold. It and does. It just doesn't let it go. Mm hmm mm hmm Yeah. Because I guess because the arena is like a fishbowl or with concrete around it. Oh yep. my God, I was freezing. And people were coming in from working outside and they were like in shirt sleeves and complaining about the heat. And I'm like, I'm so cold. <laughs> <laughs> Being a baby. Um, and then the authors, uh, so Susan Friedland, our friend, was there. Um, uh, Sarah Hickner, mm -hmm. who's a friend, uh, has a, a memoir, two memoirs, really. Finding out. Gideon, right? The new mm -hmm. one. Yeah, like a racing memoir. Uh she had this ridiculous skull cap that she claims is what she galloped horses in. Like, in this century, I was like, girl, <laughs> you're so lucky you're not, like, Dead. drooling in a hospital bed. She's like, this is what everyone wears. But, mm. So we had a really great public fight about that. Uh <laughs> <laughs> So if anyone uh, caught that, please uh, tag Adulting with Horses podcast so we can see and share. 
<laughs> shaming Sarah. No, I mean, everybody has different experiences. It's just, um, that was a little dangerous. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, 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 Sarah Welkbainham, our wonderful friend, was there. We she's had a really so good time. fun she, and bubbly. So fun and bubbly. And she's got fiction. So check her out. And uh, Tiffany Noel Chacon. I don't know if I'm pronouncing her last name right. Um, but she also has a fiction and she's another Florida horse girl. So they were all there. Lots of fun horse books. It was really authors. cute. They were having a really good time. It's not a big shopping fair. So the, mm -hmm. the vending is almost more of a browsing situation for people that are between spectating. Well, I heard things. that a lot of the authors got roped into like a impromptu Zumba session with a horse. Oh, and I saw yeah. some photos of that. And I was like, mm, don't see Natalie in that. <laughs> mm. No, well, I was working. Um, mm -hmm, I had responsibilities. Sure. I had like, okay, a lanyard that said volunteer on it and a hat. So you were like, volunteer. legit as fuck. Girl, I was running the help desk by the last <laughs> afternoon, and I <laughs> loved it. And I had no idea the answer to anything, but I figured it out, and it was super fun. <laughs> That's how you learn. Um, but they did, yeah. I mean, if you hang out with Sarah Bainham, you'll probably get roped into a flash mob at some point. Love That's that. kind of her deal. Yeah. Well, and isn't she going on to the Horse Lover's Cruise yes, she with does. us? Yes, so we'll be we'll be in the Latin dance club. Thank you very much. I'm just gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna be there. It's gonna be awesome. Um, yeah. So I fully believe it was her fault that the authors got roped into performing in a freestyle competition with a horse, which is the the freestyle is exactly what it sounds like. You can do just about anything with a horse. I think. Yeah. I know there's a score sheet. There's certain maneuvers that that have to be performed, but. Otherwise, it's yeah. It was a whole lot of crazy going on in that ring again with baby racehorses. So <laughs> I love it. I love it. The pictures looked amazing. I definitely was missing out. You know, you guys looked like you had so much fun. It was awesome. Well, you did what I needed to do, which was go into the woods and finish. <laughs> Say <book>. no. Because <laughs> now what I'm I did was to said no. <laughs> <laughs> Something new I'm working on. <laughs> yeah. Um. But I will probably, I will probably be, I, I would say working this event annually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is a good so mission. So I won't invite people. you to any birthday shindigs ever because you'll be busy. Yeah. You know me. I don't really go to parties. <laughs> it would, you know, if you were to say, hey, Nat, do you want just you and me to have a birthday drink? I'd be all in. But. No. Well, know. you know, my birthday was on a Saturday. So like, that's kind of tough. If my birthday was on a weekday, I, I would say like, yeah, sure, I'll go the weekend before or after. But it was the only weekend in October and November and the beginning of December that wasn't booked. And I was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I should maybe do nothing. Like I should maybe. So my husband goes, what do you want to do for your birthday? And I said, I want to do nothing. I would like to go to Vermont. And he goes, by yourself? And I was like, that's cool. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, do you want us to come? I was like, whatever. Like, I, I don't care. Like, I just want to be in Vermont. <laughs> And so we did that. We took the dogs. The kids had activities. They did kid things with the grandparents. And we just went for a hike on the Appalachian Trail. And I got to plot the next book in the series. That I, and uh, yeah, it was great. It was lovely. That's lovely. ideal. That was the best. Yeah. That sounds Zero amazing. Mm. Oh, my God. And, and I got to drink and eat good food while I was there, too. So Let me tell okay. you something about good food. Mm -hmm. If I may. Always. I was staying around the corner from this country restaurant, very unassuming looking, called Windy Corner Market. Now, Windy Corner Market is run by the same chef that runs the like very venerable Wallace Station, which is out in Midway. I don't know if you've ever been there. And a bunch of other restaurants no, around. Oh, Wallace Station makes the best sandwiches. Oh, my God. We'll go. Um. So this, this, she's like a celebrity chef in Lexington. Yeah. So um, if you've ever gone to a corner store, ordered shrimp and grits and had the best shrimp of grits of your entire life, then you might have gone to Lexington because <laughs> this food was so good. I had to take a bite and then pause to think about it for a while afterwards. I believe you took photos of your food too, which is I not did. like you. No, it's something I used to do when I was on Twitter. Um and I have stopped doing that. And this was so good. It was worth 
the idiocy. Uh <laughs> Listen, literally the whole time I was in Iceland, I was like, um, I'm a food blogger now because all the food was so pretty. You just had to take photos. It made me miss like doing like theme park blogging. And actually years ago, I used to blog about food in Brooklyn. And it kind of made me miss that too. I was like, I'm a food blogger again. I'm back in this. <laughs> it's so much fun. I'm back, baby. I have so much to say about food right now. <laughs> yeah. So we ate like a lot of Southern food. A lot. As you should in mm -hmm. Lexington. Yeah. yeah, it was really great. I think I'll be back there in May of next year. Um We'll see. We'll see about that because the schedule's getting a little crazy. I know. Um, and I'm learning to say no to things. So, like, that's cool and new. Um, yeah. Well, it sounds like you had a fun weekend and I had a fun weekend. Just we doing, like, literally the polar opposite of things. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I embraced my inner Natalie and escaped into my, my hermit lodge mm -hmm. and wrote. And, uh, and you went and did, and did fun, like extroverted things, talking to people. Like I did. I usually um, do. I touristed. I went to bourbon distilleries. I went to Hill and Dale farm and my horse hero, Curlin and ghost zapper for God's sake. Um, so it was a lot. I can't even believe I have the energy to speak to you right now, but. Well, doing that's, good. I mean, doing good. I'll, I'll lift you up. <laughs> well, and so would you recommend this event for anybody who likes thoroughbreds and wants to retrain thoroughbreds? So like, would you recommend that they enter and go to this? I think so. Um, it's a lot of pressure, I think, because depending on, you know, if you can get your horse early in the previous year, then you have more time to train it, obviously. Um, but if it's something that you're thinking about, you might as well put it on your calendar. It's something to work towards even if you don't actually get to go to it because of, you know, typical setbacks. Um, it's it's always nice to have something on your calendar, you know, to, yeah. to give you some motivation. And if you get to go, how great. Everybody gets a ribbon when they get in. I think everybody gets a saddle pad. So that's nice. That's so cool. You're, yeah. One of my clients is actually, I've got a saddle fit evaluation. The horse isn't backed, but it's RRP eligible for next year. And so they are, before they get on that horse, they want to make sure the saddle fits correctly and there's no problems and everything. So, so maybe I'll have a horse in the running next year. That would be so cool. That would be fun. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Like even the number of people I knew who were, who were there. And of course our podcasting uh, cohort, Justine from. Oh yeah. Heels did Down you go Happy to the party? Hour. I did. How was that? Yeah. We, we had so much fun and West Sixth Brewing came. Um, and so we all had beer and then sort of there was filtering inside to watch the barrel racing, which is extremely exciting, especially when one horse jumped out of the arena. Um, mm -hmm. So when you enter two disciplines, be mindful of which two disciplines you train your horse for. <laughs> barrel right. racing Probably and jumping. Probably not jumping and yeah. barrel racing. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it was really cool. Um, met a lot of really nice people and... Maybe hooked up with some people that want to give us prizes for things like our spooky season challenge. Ooh, mm -hmm. that's so fun. Oh, and we got to talk about the spooky season challenge because this is our first year doing it. And so far, people are having so much fun with it. It is going I, adorably. Yeah. It's so cute. So I will say from my experience, because, you know, I am obviously trying my best to contribute. Um I did the feeding the horse something different thing. And then I, I brought two things. Like I brought Twizzlers and then I brought little candy corn pumpkins. And I thought I was recording for the pumpkins. I was not. I was not <laughs> recording for the pumpkins. So <laughs> just a note, I'm terrible at video like all the time. And if you see me in a video, it's a miracle it happened. Okay. <laughs> Oh, completely. I would, yeah, I would like to encourage anyone who's afraid to post videos to watch our videos yes, exactly. on our Instagrams and TikToks because they're better. bad. Totally. And we just embrace the badness because you know what? A lot of really successful, rich, undeserving YouTubers are terrible at videos. So why shouldn't I do them? Uh, also, aren't the bloopers like the best part? I don't know if you're like me. I love watching the bloopers and like the, uh, like, well, this is what happened. Shit. My favorite part, I did the, the treat challenge with Reese's pumpkins. And my favorite part was the transcript that showed up when I put it into TikTok, you know, and I, I tell it to do captions. To the captions, yeah. And the caption was like, no, Ben, Ben, no, that's the rapper. Stop, Ben, I've lost control of Ben. 
That's amazing. <laughs> like frame that. <laughs> <laughs> So it was great. But I can't believe some of the others, um, the people in our clubhouse or on Instagram who are, who are also participating, one person took their horse to work with them. I, saw I was like, I influenced someone to take their horse to work. <laughs> I thought that was so cool because not only are they taking, so there's only six challenges, right? For the whole month. Right. And, um, you know, they're reasonable. Some of them like... You know, showing up to work in your barn clothes is kind of silly for me because I literally wear my barn clothes to work and then I wear regular street clothes to the barn. So it's like totally <laughs> opposite. <laughs> like every day, it's <laughs> totally fine. So like, you know, I have to tweak things, but they're making up their own challenges. Like mm -hmm. they're going with it. They're taking it and running. And I applaud the creativity. I think that that is like bonus points. Oh, for sure. Yeah, make it your own. That's what, you know, I tried to keep it loose when I was I was writing these up, just like, la, 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 what's crazy? <laughs> and, uh, and you know, initially some folks asked, well, I, you know, I can't wear horse clothes to work. And I was like, make something up. Do something else. Do something to have So fun. she brought her horse to work. Yeah. I don't, I, you know, and I don't understand the mental gymnastics that uh, went from I can't dress in horse clothes at work to I can bring my horse with me, but I fully support it. I'm here for it. <laughs> I think that's awesome. And everyone's posting in the clubhouse, mm -hmm. seeing the notifications for um, like Instagram and all that. I just, I've been having so much fun watching everybody just have fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. I really think uh, we're having a good time bringing people together and just the strangest ways. I didn't even tell you the one of the craziest things about my trip to Kentucky is that I was uh, staying across the hall from uh, one of our listeners. No way. Yeah. And so she actually, you know, uh, she gave me a ride to uh, Kentucky Horse Park and we got to hang out a little bit and have a really good time. And that just... That's just the kind of crazy stuff that has been happening consistently. God, I love the horse world. I know. It's so much it's, fun. We meet so many great people. It's just an icebreaker. Oh, it, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That is truly awesome. I think, um, yeah, more of that. Like, let's yeah. just unite people. Like, forget this whole divisive, oh, you're a bad rider. Oh, I don't like how you trot. Whatever, people. Let's get silly with our horses and For just real, own it. yeah. Like, Stop taking things so seriously. The judgmental stuff. Keep your eyes on your own horse, number yeah. one. And don't worry about it. And have a really good... Give your horse treats. Yes. And video it. Yeah. And take them to work. That's and right. tell us about it. And <laughs> That's what we're looking for here. Hay in your bra and mm -hmm. show us pictures about it. That's totally fine. Yes. You know, the real challenge I'm having with my bra today <laughs> is not hay because I haven't touched any hay yet today. But like it has these pads in it. I don't oh, know. What do they for. fold when you wash? Yeah, and they're starting to get a little rolled up like all the time. So I've got like bumpy boob. But it's... you know what you do with that? You take the pad out. But you well, do I... it in a public place where you just look like you're <laughs> taking out the chicken cutlets. <laughs> just reach my hand and just is... shove it on the table like boom. <laughs> I love that idea. I know. That's that so could be good. a challenge for next year. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a spring challenge as you start shedding your clothing. <laughs> <laughs> shedding your winter weight just take out your bra padding <laughs> yeah yeah like different ways to to feel better about yourself lighter socks <laughs> no more bra pad <laughs> oh my god i absolutely love it i love it well so for anybody who wants to join the spooky season challenge unfortunately it's over soon but next year i think we're gonna have to do it again and we'll have to have it even better and i'm excited i'm actually gonna get a horse show ribbon it's gonna mm -hmm. have a ghost on it i mean and I don't I, have to be judged. You know, s s f s fall is not the only spooky season. That's true. Spring, There's winter. such a thing as a spring spooky season, I believe. <laughs> so, you know, depending on how creative we feel, this could all happen again in three months. <laughs> this could. And I do think we should take our adult horse show to the next level because now we see people are interested in having fun with it. So I think yeah. we should do some of those. Um but before we move, on, I think we should read some of the spooky stories from our adult adulting with horses clubhouse, because some people did submit some stories that I think we should share. Yes, it is the spookiest season of all. And while um, some of us have only encountered horse spooks so far this month, uh, we've got some crazy spooky stories 
here in the clubhouse as well. <laughs> we do. We've got we've got about five that we're going to read. And did you want to start it off, or do you want me to start it off? Uh, would you be so kind as to start it off while I find my place on the internet because my computer and is... you fix your bra. <laughs> Nah, my bra can stay the way it is. Okay, yes, I will do it. So so our first is from Adrian, and she says, uh, not directly on topic, but dot, dot, dot. Like we've ever been on topic. I know. Oh my God. Have you listened to the podcast? Uh, they Yes, obviously, which is why she submitted it. Anyway, um, they brought in an executive coach to work, and all of the people leaders had to do hours and hours of this training. One of the days focused on background conversations, which the idea um, was all of the stuff going on in your head and colors your interactions with people, but you need to let it go, which is great advice, right? Um, so they used an analogy that said, teach you not to act out of fear uh, because zebras aren't scared of rocks just because there was a lion behind one once. Oh, and my God. Right. And so so everyone in the room is nodding thoughtfully. And she, Adrian here is thinking, what the fuck are you talking about? Because she's thinking of the time she was working through a situation with her, quote, delinquent herd in which a pair of geese made a nest in the pasture and the snorting lasted for months after they'd left and taken the brood elsewhere. <laughs> so they're not exactly role models for fearlessness. <laughs> and she says, pony. Whiffly snort, there were geese there. And her, I know you talk about it every damn day. Oh so apparently business coaches are stupid as fuck. And uh, zebras probably still spook at lion rocks. So Honestly, this is why I don't believe in motivational quotes. And I don't believe in metaphors because they are consistently apples to oranges. Right. What, why... Would I take life advice from a zebra first and foremost? I don't live in the same circumstances as a zebra. So don't say, well, a zebra wouldn't do this, so you shouldn't do it. That doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> I, also, uh, zebras that live in the wild are going to have different reactions than horses that are wrapped in bubble in a paddock and not seeing a lot of things outside or like that are maybe stalled versus living outside. Like there's a lot of factors here. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of factors. Yeah. So yeah, none of that. Uh, don't be motivational with me. I'll free, I'll flip out on you. I have so <laughs> Also, <laughs> both are prey animals. And all of your motivational quotes. That's yeah, and nonsensical. I guess, I guess this business coach probably has never been to Africa and probably never saw a zebra ever in their life. So they can <laughs> zip it. <laughs> zip it. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll jump into I'll jump into the next one. I don't think it has any zebras in it. All right, um, this story is from Erin. She says the one that stands out to me as both silly and funny happened one winter. I was finishing up a good lesson in the indoor, and my coach sent us out to cool down walking at one end of the arena on a loose rain. Suddenly, a huge chunk of snow slid off the roof. I don't know what snow is. Shut up. In an instant, my mare crouched like a cat and spooked smoothly enough that I came off and landed standing up on my feet directly next to her. That's impressive. <laughs> Man, she should teach us. My instructor, who had been talking to us but had her back to us at the other end of the arena, turned around a second after all this happened. She asked incredulously, why are you on the ground? And I was laughing so hard I could barely answer her to explain that my horse had simply disappeared out from under me like a puff of smoke. Erin, come on, <laughs> that's like a, witchcraft. <laughs> car a cartoon no situation. One falls off like that well. <laughs> Admit it. I Aaron. did it once. I did it once, but it'll probably never happen again. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> to be fair, it was my first ride back, uh, my first fall after taking like, you know, 17 years off and my body just remembered that I could do gymnastics. Oh. And then every fall since it was like, no, you're old. Remember that? And so my muscle memory left. Just yeah. Right. Yeah. My first fall after a long break, oh, I was bruised up and down my body because mm -hmm. I forgot to let go. <laughs> yeah. I tend to try to hold that rein. Mm -hmm. Um 
which is how I sprain fingers. Um, so <laughs> don't be like Heather. Joyce <laughs> says, I have a good one. My mom, friend, and I used to feed at our lesson barn. After we fed, my friend and I would ride our lesson horses a bit. One night, we didn't throw the hay in my horse's field until after we rode to make sure he got some. The rest of the horses were on the other side of the field. We went to go get them, so we walked out into the dark with the flash of my phone as a flashlight. This was like 2007. Suddenly, my friend turned around and ran back to the gate. I had the only light, so I followed her. When we, go to the, when we got to the gate, she asked why we were running. I said, I don't know. I ran because you ran. I think we ran from the cat. The barn cat had followed us out into the field and spooked them. <laughs> spooked. <laughs> the human spooked. That was her mentality in action. <laughs> I'm running. You're running. Let's go. It's literally. <laughs> yeah. Remember that every time somebody spooks at nothing and then everybody's galloping away. <laughs> Well, she said to go. So we all we do went. it. <laughs> no one wants to be the one left behind. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> I used to be really afraid to walk out around my property at night because there are noises out there. And oh, yeah. I don't know what all of them are, but now I just go out. And <laughs> Most of them are not going to hurt you, which is nice. I don't so. know. It's Florida. Well, yeah, that's true. Anything could hurt you in Florida. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's the going on. The mosquitoes are the size of like rabbits. <laughs> there could be a zebra. <laughs> It could be. They're actually, according, you know, Glenn was telling his story. Like, he took a, a ride with Scooter, and there was an actual flipping panther in the woods tracking them. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. There's that. Yeah, there's we have that. panthers. I know yeah. Western people are like, we have panthers too. But your panthers are acknowledged in Florida. The government won't acknowledge any panthers exist north of the Everglades. <laughs> so there's like... No studies or control or anything done on them up here. It's just all word of mouth. And they're they'll they'll disappear. You'll never know they're there unless mm -hmm. you're and unless you're prey. Um, yeah. So yeah, funsies. So we have all another right. one from Joyce. Joyce is a spooky lady. <laughs> yeah. Well, her horse is named Boo Boo. So yeah. All right, Boo Boo. That's hmm. Boo. <laughs> oh, like the little bear. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah, the yogi bear. The little bear is Boo Boo. Yeah. We should ask. Yeah. Joyce, tell us. So here's her story. Another time, I was on a trail ride with my horse, Boo Boo, as we established, with another girl on her horse. It was a new trail in the woods. Trails are dangerous. We all know this. And the trees were thick around the spot where we were turning to go down a steep hill. My friend was leading, and a turkey flew from one treetop to another over her. Her horse jumped around, freaking out, and would have bolted if Boo Boo hadn't been in his path. Boo Boo didn't see the turkey at all. It was like, Cisco, what are you doing? <laughs> That's the opposite of her first story. <laughs> that is when her mentality was like, no, you grow up. Like, yeah. You're fine. So Boo Boo is much braver than Joyce and her friend. Apparently. Because... <laughs> <laughs> or or he's just like not paying attention and like he's going to be the first one murdered. <laughs> he's like, why are you staring at me? <laughs> I, I love that he was boo -boo. blocking I be the, the way <laughs> so nobody could run. And he's just like, we're all going down, people. Um, um, so Kimberly actually wrote from her horse's perspective here. Okay? Ah, okay. So So bear with me. She says, hi, this is Guinness. Before I got my own junior rider, I was owned by Kimberly. One night I was standing the cross when Kim was possessed by a traveling demon or something. <laughs> Seriously, I'm just hanging out, getting groomed when she walks into the tack room and has a demonic episode. <laughs> she starts flailing around, kicking the grooming box and pulling the saddle off its rack before ending up on her back <laughs> like a dead bug well i saw enough so i popped back headed out of there <laughs> no demon was getting me her excuse was she tripped over the threshold in the dark and there wasn't any demon so maybe it was an alien <laughs> guinness you didn't even think to protect her <laughs> no that would ferris would 100 percent do the same thing he would be like peace out she's getting busted i'm not involved in this situation at all but also i would like to say kim um yeah, I feel you because I also have trouble walking. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, it's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, those are our spooky stories from the clubhouse. The, it's funny how, um, you know, last year we did ghost stories. Yeah. But all of these were very spooky because they were all extremely relatable. <laughs> 
and so like realistic. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh yeah, I could go down this way. Oh yeah, I yeah. could end all this way. <laughs> well, I'll tell you right now, Ferris is feeling real cute and I'm a little nervous to ride him because he's feeling good and he loves the colder weather and so it's like a no stick no spur ride right because you barely add leg and he's like off like a rocket which is wonderful in some ways because it pays me back for the summer of slowness <laughs> but but like the other day we were we were in a lesson i didn't even tell you did i even tell you this sort of time about how i walked out of my lesson no, no, I think you told me that you did, but I did not get details on this. <laughs> okay, so this is part of it. So my trainer was like, oh, let's canter. I said, I can't canter him. He's feeling a little bit up, right? He's like, if we canter, this is going to end badly. Like, I just feel it. And as we're trotting past the woods, because we have woods all on one or two sides of the arena, he starts looking and he's like trotting like this bulge to the side like he's like kind of jigging and I'm like what are you looking at and apparently there was a man and his dog in the woods and i wanted to murder them yeah but so this was the vibe and so we're, and we're laughing about it we all stop we're talking and i get off in the arena and i'm talking to everybody and then i just lead my little pony up after i you know untighten his girth and things like that loosen whatever you know words and I walk up and no one follows me. Like I look outside and my lesson is still going on with my other friend who's riding and she's jumping now. And I, I poke my head out and I was like, did I just leave the lesson? And they both start laughing hysterically. I just walked out of a lesson, like fully not paying attention thinking it was done. I left. I walked out like I was possessed by the laziness demon. And... <laughs> I literally am like crying hysterically to myself. I'm like, what is wrong with me? And so the like literally for the next week, all I hear was like, oh, are you still here? Cool. Just checking. Like they're all making fun of me now. I have to tell you the energy for everyone the past couple of weeks <laughs> has been purely chaotic. I, you are not the first person who has done something completely bizarre. <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> It's just the all the energy has been chaotic. And, you know, we just had the solar eclipse. And we've got a lunar eclipse coming, too. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just like things are vibes are out of whack when that <laughs> happens. It's not like an unnatural out of whack. I'm not expecting the aliens to arrive or anything like that. Nothing's coming out of your hell mouth. <sighs> no, not that I'm aware of. I heard something weird last night. But like I said, it happens. Uh, so I just, yeah, just it's just like a lilo kind of situation right now. If weird stuff happens, shrug it off. <laughs> the veil is thinning. Yeah, yeah. it's. Yeah. A, I mean, it's October. Maybe, maybe it's this weird every year. And I, and because I was in, I was in Ohio last October, so you know the vibes were bad. And <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Ohio, but you know what we're talking about. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, I was in Ohio last month, too, but very briefly. <laughs> oh, my God. No, it was definitely a weird vibe. And so now this is running this running joke. So at the last That's um, funny. lesson I had, they had to keep turning around to make sure I was still there. I was like, all right. That's going to be so hard to live down. Oh, no, you I'll never live it down. It's fine. Maybe you can do something else weird that you're more comfortable with. <laughs> Oh, some I do something weird like at least <laughs> once or twice a month. So, I mean, just pick your poison at this point. <laughs> remember the time I rode my horse with the stirrup leather underneath the panel? Oh, yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. That was cool. That was mm -hmm. fun. That was only um, a few months ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I could come up with loads of stories, Natalie. I mean, <laughs> I, if you want bloopers, I am a blooper. Mm -hmm. Like, that is lit literally my job. So. I I actually I did something dumb in a lesson like two weeks ago. I t I took a a jumping lesson and I'm air quoting jumping because there was no jumping, but there were poles and my stirrups were shorter. And matters um, it matters. Yeah, and so you know I got picked on for my position like right off the bat, and I was like that's fine. And um, I'm riding along, and something clicked with me, and I was like oh out loud like that. So it wasn't your joints that clicked. It was like an idea. That was a mental click. Okay. <laughs> And the trainer's like, what was that? <laughs> and I said, no, I just completely figured out what you've been saying to me for the past 10 minutes. It just went into place. And I vocalized that. Just like, oh, Ooh. <laughs> she's younger than me, far more accomplished than me. <laughs> she clearly thinks I'm insane. It's fine. <laughs>
it's it's she'll get used to you it'll mm-hmm. be fine like mm-hmm. at this I'm point fine. i mean even even like when it happened with the, my trainer i was like why didn't you call me back like you just watched me walk away and she was <laughs> like well you know you worked really hard and the horse was sweating and like we figured you were sh- you should just be done <laughs> She won't be missed. <laughs> I'm going to put an all call out right now for lesson bloopers. If we can get those in the clubhouse. Yeah, let's do that. I we think need that lesson be, bloopers. That would be a great... Because, like, I'm crying. Like, it was... <laughs> it's just so senseless. <laughs> I, like, poke my head out. I'm like, where is everybody? And they're, like, <laughs> like going on about their lives. And they oh just... My God. It was great. It was phenomenal. So, um, so, so yeah, it's totally fine. But, um, I'd like to shift gears really quick because we're, we're like almost out of time here. Yeah. And say my adulting win, however, I did a little bit redeem myself because the lesson after that, the one I stayed for, um, they were like, oh, do you want to do a little cross rail? And I don't know if you remember, but my goal for the fall was to do, to jump Ferris. Right. Because right? he loves jumping. F- yeah, and to get him fit enough that we could do that. Mm-hmm. So I haven't jumped him in maybe like two years. Mm. Um, we knew he tends to get excited. So instead of coming down the line, we just took the second jump and I leg yielded him into it. So like he didn't have time to like race. And um, it wasn't super pretty. Like we, we definitely came in and, and exited. We were supposed to exit with a trot, but we cantered on the wrong lead. Like it was fun. But we went over it. It was super cute. We had fun. Nobody died. And so, yeah, I met like I'm partially at my goal for the year. Which That's is awesome. cool. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we got to work on it. But hey, first time out, you know. Taking it out of a circle sounds like a good plan to keep him from blah, blah, blah on you. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so and so I think everybody needs to stay tuned because he's going to be used in a, an IE, IEA show in November um, just on the flat because, you know, not ready for that, <laughs> um, for the jumping, for all that. But uh, so he'll be on the flat for some advanced riders. So I'm pretty sure i'm gonna have some some terrible blooper stories because ferris is about to bring it to all those kids <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be like what the actual fuck like no that's great <laughs> so yeah so th- there will be fast forward there were gonna be some fun ferris stories coming uh. up <laughs> but how about you what was your adulting win of the week besides okay, so- the shrimp and grits yeah well, the sh- well you know it's funny uh at first i thought well my adulting win of the week is going to be that it's um, after 2 p.m. And I have not okay. yet eaten a cookie, which since I'm coming off of vacation, <laughs> when I do whatever I want, whenever I want, <laughs> is a big accomplishment. Because we actually do quite a few cookies in the house. Um, and I haven't eaten any of them. Or fudge. We still have some fudge left over. Yeah, I bought fudge in Kentucky. Fight me. Uh, but you reminded me of something while you're speaking. Did I? Yeah. And so my adult team win of the week is going to be that I did not succumb yet to peer pressure. And the peer pressure came in the form of a 13-year-old girl. The very worst (laughs) kind. God, they're so mean at that age. They're so mean. (laughs) So mean. So when I was... I say that because I have two. Yeah, right? It's horrifying. Um, (laughs) That's horrifying. Horrendous. I was working with a 13-year-old girl, as one does at a horse show. And um, she she was great. And... Then I was texting my friend and I was like, to my friend, I was like, hey, do you want to do this hunter pace? Because I'm thinking I can just like, I can go around anything that looks scary. It's not a big deal. And she says, why don't we go to an event that weekend? (laughs) And I'm looking at my phone like, are you kidding? And then she like amended like to do a combined desk or whatever. And I'm like, "Mm -mm." so I said something to the kid, right? I'm like, you know, I've never schooled this horse cross country. And my friend was like, maybe you should just take him starter level anyway. And the, and I just don't know because, I mean, I don't know what if something, you know, worried him. I'd be out on course. I couldn't practice. This kid looks at me like, you fucking idiot. She just looks up at me. She's shorter than me. Amazing. And she's like, he'll be fine. What are you worried oh. about? <laughs> From the mouths of babes who bounce. Okay. They bounce at that age. I know. They're Gumby. <laughs> Then she keeps, she's like, he's going to be in a field. He's not going to have a problem with a jump in a field. 
oh my god like she was so offended by my she's husband. like shaming you she really was. it was hysterical just laughed i was like i don't know babe god bless the ignorant because she just hasn't ha- had to sit it yet like- and it was so <laughs> funny it was so funny and she's and she's you know there as like a person who rides retired racehorses at 13 which is you know yeah we all like to ride those horses that just find their spot anywhere you kick them at but i don't have that anymore <laughs> he could scare himself and scare me <laughs> so i adulted real hard by, by not um, saying anything snarky to the 13 year old no i was definitely snarky with her she's <laughs> She was great. I loved her. Um, but <laughs> I'll probably see her again. Um, but I didn't, even though I I weighed, I spoke to several people about it because I thought it was funny. And I weighed my options several times um, and said, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to be peer pressured into this. Yeah. If you don't I'm, feel ready, you're not ready. Yeah. I would consider doing a combined test, even though I hate combined tests because I really don't like doing show jumping um but at least i could trot all the jumps <laughs> it would yeah. be contained and he knows how to do it um but yeah 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 i was strong in the face of the adolescent contempt and um you were stronger than the middle school mean girl i was so, and she wasn't yeah. even mean she was normal i know <laughs> she was well so- she's probably saying what a lot of people think right because there's a lot of writers out there who have that mentality it's just get over it but yes. not everyone thinks that way. So, yes. you know, yeah, agree sure. to disagree. Yeah. I just need a stronger leg and then I can just get over it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, It'll I mean, I didn't get here to this point of um, whatever this point is by being in a hurry. So, obviously. What are we rushing for? I don't know. Dessert. No, I'm, I... <laughs> You're making me hungry. I have three bags of Halloween candy upstairs I haven't eaten yet. Okay. You're not allowed to eat that yet, are you? Well, I are you giving that to children or no? I put it away, (laughs) and my family found the stash, and it had been gotten. uh, They've been slowly reducing the number of candy I have to give out to children, so I had to find a new stash. And everyone's everyone's trying to bribe me for the details, (laughs) and I refuse to give out that information. But now I'm hungry for you know what I'm hungry for a Reese's Pieces pumpkin. Oh yeah. They're, They're the, best. the best ones. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah. Until the Christmas tree ones come out. Yeah. Well, you know what? The eggs are the best ones. The Easter eggs. Mm. And they're practically the pumpkins, but somehow not. <laughs> just yeah, just a slightly different mm-hmm. shape. They're more they're more round versus oval, you know. For... You know, well, I actually have Reese's story, if I may tell it. Yes, yesterday. tell your story and then we'll wrap <laughs> on that. We're gonna wrap with my peanut butter story. So yesterday we stopped at this um this like farm tour attraction place because they had a billboard um, with a picture of a grilled cheese on it. As one does. Um, yeah, and we were like, oh my God, that grilled cheese looks amazing. Like it's a photograph of a grilled cheese blown up a hundred times. And Corey looks on the map really quick and he's like, it's only 10 minutes off the highway. And I'm like, we're there. So we go to this place <laughs> and we got grilled cheeses and we got this chocolate peanut butter milkshake that was legitimately the best milkshake I've ever had. Sounds really good. In my entire life. It was insane. And then it turned out there were there was a Reese's like broken up at the bottom of it, but the it had a dome lid and it was covered with like whipped cream. It was super messy. And so <laughs> Corey used a straw and slurped uh, <laughs> the bites of Reese's cup onto the bottom of the straw and then I would scoop them out and we were eating oh, and we were I covered lost you again. with chocolate. It was like we were both eight years old. <laughs> That's my story. It was worth it. Did it go out Amazing. Again? Oh, okay. Amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, but now I got you back. So we'll see oh, how okay. much we catch of that. But um, <laughs> I hear that story and this might be TMI, but like, what am I if not TMI? Um, <laughs> All I think about is like, I couldn't do that on a road trip because I would be in the bathroom for the next three hours, like having to do emergency stop because of the, my lactose intolerance. But it sounds wonderful. Oh, yeah, it was wonderful. And let me tell you, we split things like that. 
because yes. I'll die from just general death. Uh- <laughs> just gen- general death, you just know, general not the death. specific kind of of milk death, but you yeah, know, yeah. I don't, I don't specify. I just die. <laughs> well, and if we're gonna talk food story, so I, um, I had to go to a fundraiser last night, and it was at a barbecue joint, and I was like, this is a very expensive table for a barbecue joint. Um, <laughs> barbecue is so expensive. Tur- well, you know, it's fine. It was for my daughter's constraint therapy camp that she basically learned to do everything in. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my husband's on the board and we really, you know, they've done a lot for us. So I was like, sure, I'll pay $200 for a piece of fried chicken, you know, like whatever. But there was a wine pairing and it was bottomless champagne with it. It was like champagne and fried chicken. I'm here for it. You you tell me champagne, I'm going to do. But I'll, I'm not even kidding. I don't know what was in the fried chicken. There was something about, I've never had anything like it. And I've eaten a lot of fried chicken in my life. Like it's, <laughs> I'm a connoisseur. There was like honey, t- like hints of honey. Like it was so good that I was basically just eating the skin, like, and just drinking champagne. It was awesome. It was the best <laughs> fried chicken I've ever had. So like definitely worth the money. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, um I, I don't know if I could ever have fried chicken anywhere else again like it was that good like, i like a pickle brined fried chicken Ooh, i've never had that oh yeah mm-hmm, yeah mm-hmm. i'm yeah uh, because okay then maybe you get i will on the have inside, to try you know and the chicken has been soaking in like salty vinegary pickle water yum so it's all good all of that okay fine i mean re- i i take back my comment about not eating fried chicken again and i will You'll be searching for that yeah yes I will be searching. <laughs> all right on that note not only until next time <sighs> Let there be chicken. And chocolate.